Life is pain followed by more pain. There's really no point in trying to make anything any better because it all falls apart in the end anyway, and nothing really matters. If what I just said sounds like you, I'm willing to bet that there has been at least one prolonged period of your life when there was no way to escape some type of pain. Whether that was physical, emotional, or possibly both, I suspect that you have been in a situation where it did not matter what you did, where experiencing suffering or some type of negative outcome was inevitable and disconnected from what you did as an individual. If that's the case, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how these beliefs form today, how they become overgeneralized into our entire lives or maybe even the whole world and what you can do to try to start to get yourself out of this thought process. If this is your first time here, let me just briefly introduce myself. My name is Dr. Scott. I am a licensed, board certified, and full-time practicing clinical psychologist. YouTube is not my job, it's my side gig. My other side gig is that I'm an author. I wrote a book called For When Everything is Burning. And if by the end of this video, you think I might have something worth listening to, I would be incredibly honored if you also wanted to check out my book. If not, that's perfectly okay too. I'll continue making this content for free because it's important to me that I do so. What we're talking about today is a phenomenon known as learned helplessness. Sometimes in life, it doesn't matter what we do. And there can be many reasons for this. I think probably the most obvious example is anyone who's been in any type of abusive situation, whether that was like a domestic violence situation or your parents growing up or, or any situation where someone treated you unfairly. And one thing that all abusive situations have in common is there's nothing you can do in the moment to stop the pain because it's not based on you, it's based on your abuser. In other words, when people are experiencing abuse, they try to like crack the code and figure out, you know, what am I doing to cause this? Or how can I act in some certain way to get this person to stop doing what they've been doing? And anyone who's been in a situation like that inevitably eventually learns that the answer is nothing. There's nothing you can do to make them a safe person. That's just one example, though. If you're listening to this and you think, well, I feel the way he said in the beginning, but I haven't been in a situation like that, that's not the only example. It's also possible that you have spent a large portion of your life with a person or in a situation that was just overly harsh and judgmental and critical. These could even be workplace situations. These could be education situations. These could be sports teams you were on. If you've had someone in your life and in some position of authority for you for a long period of time, where no matter what you did, it was never good enough. It was always judged. It was always criticized. It was never worthy of praise. At some point, you learn it really doesn't matter what I do. I can put forth my best effort. I can do everything in my power. I can even do things beyond what I thought I was capable of doing. And I still just get insulted, yelled at, criticized, shamed, judged. And so at some point, if you're in a situation like that, you decide, why bother trying anymore? Why am I working so hard? Why am I trying to crack this code? Why am I trying to figure this out if everything I do ends in the same place? If all my efforts just result in me in some way, shape, or form getting hurt, and at some point we just give up, we stop trying. Or maybe it wasn't another person at all. Maybe you're like me, and although you've had your fair share of trouble with other people, perhaps it was your own mind that taught you to be helpless. Maybe you had a period of such severe depression or anxiety that no matter what you did, how hard you tried, how many things you accomplished, you couldn't feel anything at all. And maybe you learn from that, why bother building up relationships if I can't feel anything from them? Why bother trying to get ahead in life if it feels the same as going nowhere? Why bother doing anything if my own mind can take it away from me? And if I can fall into a pit of such despair that nothing can break through, what is the point of even putting forth all this effort? The problem is, most of those situations that create this feeling of helplessness ultimately are temporary. 
relationships are temporary, places that we live are temporary, jobs are temporary. And so when we eventually get out of this situation, we don't necessarily unlearn the patterns that we learned while we were in it. We often carry these patterns of helplessness through into other relationships or other situations in which they are not true, but we continue to function as if they were true. And that ultimately holds us back in life. This phenomenon known as learned helplessness was discovered by a psychological researcher named Martin Seligman. And I'm just gonna give you a little disclaimer this study that I'm about to explain to you, it's a bummer uh, on two levels. One is it's the implications of it are just really depressing and it might hit home for you. I promise I'll come full circle with that and give you an actionable idea at the end, but th this one might be hard to hear. The other reason it's a bummer is that the actual study itself is quite sad. Um, it involves dogs. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's it's more humane than it sounds, but it's it's not one that's going to leave you feeling good once you hear it. So, what they did in this study is they had they they had a, a group of dogs and they put them into two groups in two different types of cages or kennels. One type of cage had this little divider in it, and what the divider was for is one half of the floor had this sort of electrical grid underneath it that would occasionally deliver a mild shock to the dog. That's the bummer part. I know it's it's really sad. The other part that the dogs could easily get to was not electrified. And so after some pretty short period of time, the dogs who were in this sort of half and half cage, anytime they got shocked, they, the, the, the barrier was very small. And the dogs could easily see the safe side of the cage and enter it. And so after getting shocked a few times, the dogs would be like, well, that sucks. I don't want to be on this side of the cage anymore. And they would just basically live on the safe side of the cage. And they would never even really venture into the side that would shock them, which makes sense, right? The other group of dogs didn't have a divider. It's, it's very sad. I know the this is an important study, though. It's like I'm, I'm it breaks my heart that they did this, but I'm also really glad that they did this. Their cage, the whole thing was electrified and so they would just kind of randomly get shocked at varying intervals and there was no escape from the shock and they would try to escape at first they would test the cage they'd go to all different parts of it in different corners and they'd try to find safety they'd try to find a part of the cage that didn't hurt them but at some point i don't recall i think i'm sure it varied from one dog to the next but after some certain period of time they gave up and they, they realize this entire cage hurts and there is no point in trying to find a safe part of it because it doesn't exist. And so when they'd get shocked, they would just like lay there and take it because they learned there was no escape from the pain. That's not the really compelling part of the study, though. That I think probably, I mean, wouldn't shock anyone, right? You eventually can learn that there's no escape from pain and then you stop trying to escape. Here's the interesting part of the study. After some period of time, they took the dogs that were in the fully electrified cages and they transferred them to the half and half cages that the other groups of dogs had been in the whole time. And what they found is that these dogs who had previously been in a cage that was fully electrified, even when they were in a cage that had an escape from pain, they would not try to escape it. They would just lay on the side that had the electricity. And even though there was safety, I don't know, two, three feet away, they could see it and they could access it. They wouldn't. They would not try to get away from the pain because previously in a different environment, they had learned that the pain could not be escaped. And they had carried that knowledge, so to speak, with them into this new environment. And so even when safety was accessible, they didn't attempt to access it. I feel like I should use a different word there, but you know, stuff happens. Now, those are dogs, but we do this too. And if you've been in a situation where there was no escape from pain, you learned from that. You may now, hopefully, hopefully now you are in a situation where there is still some pain present in your life because there always will be, but that it's not always inevitable. It's not your entire life. It's not every inch of your floor. At least I hope not. 
If that's the case, you may have access to people or places or activities that don't hurt. You may be in a place now where you can build a life that is enjoyable at least some of the time, possibly even most of the time. But if that's a fairly new revelation to you, if that hasn't been true for some or maybe even most of your life, it's possible that you haven't even tried to enter the side of the cage. Obviously, the cage is your life. I'm sure you guys figured that out already, but that's the metaphor. It's possible that you have not even tried the other side of your cage. It's possible that you have not even attempted to access safety because for so long in your life, it wasn't an option and you learned that there was no point in trying. So my question to you, are you 100% sure that you are still in the cage with the fully electrified floor? If you are, then we got to figure out how to get you out of there. But make sure that you are because you might not be. You might not have realized that that part of your life is over because the pain when it's there might still feel the same. The electrical shock in the half electrified cage was the same as the one in the fully electrified cage. So it felt like the exact same thing to these dogs. They would feel the shock and they would think, oh, I know what that is. That's that pain I can't get away from. That's that inevitable suffering that I learned is just part of my life. It may feel exactly the same, but just because it is the same feeling doesn't mean it's the same cage. It doesn't mean you're in the same inescapable situation. Just because some of the same things are happening to you now that happened when you were in the inescapable situation. So I wanna make sure that you test the full floor of your life and see if you're actually still in that place or if you have just learned a pattern of helplessness from periods of time in your life when the pain truly was inescapable. If this makes sense to you, please let me know in the comments. If this does not make sense to you, please let me know in the comments. I think that this is a really important, although very depressing study to understand. I think it has tremendous implications to the lives of like probably most people. And I really want to help you guys wrap your heads around this one. So if you need additional help from me in doing so, please do not hesitate to let me know. Test that floor of your cage. See if it's still what it used to be. You may find that there's a part of it that is safe now. Take care. I'll see you next time.